Oh dear me. Uh, so I still I still don't know what to do with the background. I'm kind of torn between having a background that looks nice when you walk in the room and then having a background that works well on video. And it seems that if you try and optimize it for one thing, it doesn't work for the other and vice versa. So I think this is gonna be constantly changing. I've just hung my silver play button and I watched a video by Casey Neistat a couple of days ago and he cut his diamond play button in half. And it turns out that in Casey's video, he, um, he cut it in half because it, it was basically, it was a spare it was a spare play button and it was blemished. So they wouldn't send out the diamond play button blemished um, to Casey, so they gave it him to cut in half. I would just like to state that when my silver play button came to me, you know, how, you know last year or whenever it was, um, it's absolutely trashed. Look at the state of my silver play button. It is, you know, blemished isn't even the word. It's scratched and scuffed and it's in a right mess. Thanks, YouTube. Um, they didn't hold that one back, did they? Uh, I never said anything, you know, it's a nice gift, nice gesture, but just thought I'd mention that. Um, right, Facebook. I've deleted my Thomas Heaton landscape photography page. It's gone. Um, and I had, I had tens of thousands of followers on there and, and lots of interaction. <laughs> and as well as that, um, it's big, well, the reason it's gone is because Facebook have memorialized my personal page. That's right, Facebook think I'm dead. Um, as well as that, I, I've been sick. It's been a bad week. I've been I've been sick. I left for Washington DC to do a, a photography conference, Nature Visions. It was fantastic. Thank you to everybody who came. But unfortunately, the, that you know the work, my worst fears came true. And the day before I was due to fly, I woke up and I was like, oh no 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 no. You know you just feel it when you're getting sick. Um, and as a consequence, I ended up doing a presentation, completely losing my voice, and then. That day, the day that I woke up with no voice, I was due to present to a room of about a thousand people. I have to do a talk. So I'll talk to you about how that went. Because I've been sick, I haven't, I haven't been out and taken any photographs for about three weeks, which means I've had this camera, this is the EOS R, I've had this for a couple of weeks now and I've still not even taken a photograph with it. You know, I have switched it on and had a play, but I I haven't actually pressed the shutter speed. I've got this weird thing where the first actuation on this camera, I want to be a really nice image. Um, so, you know, I, I feel bad that I haven't done anything with this camera, but I am going to Iceland um, in a couple of days, which is actually today for you guys. So I'm going to Iceland to run a workshop for a week and I'm going to take this camera as well as my 5D4 so I can um, yeah, use it and get hands on and just give it a go uh, and let you guys know what I think. So although there might not be much content coming up over the next week because I've been sick, um, <coughs> there will be lots of content. Uh, coming up the week after next, uh, some nice winter Icelandic stuff. And as well as having my Facebook page deleted and being sick and having a damaged silver play button and not being able to get my backdrop in order, um, I also, in the last video that hopefully you guys will have seen, if you haven't seen it, you can watch it here. Um, this happened, yeah, my Canon M50, my vlogging camera, uh, fell over and, and broke in half. But let's, let's get started with Facebook. <laughs> um, so, uh, I've been sick, I've been away, I've been traveling, I've been feeling pretty rubbish, been in bed for the most, most part of this week. And um, I, I thought, oh, let's, have a, let's have a little browse on Facebook, switched on my uh, phone. <laughs> Turns out, somehow, my personal Facebook page has been memorialized. So it says, when you log on to my, you know, when I log on, I, I can't log on. But if somebody visits my personal page, and my, my personal page is locked, so only friends and family get to access my page. But when they log on, it says, it basically says that Thomas Heaton is deceased and um, he's, he died and I don't know, it's, it's ridiculous. It says I'm dead and this page is a memorial to me. Um, and it, either one of two things has happened, it's a bug and it shouldn't have happened, or somebody has trolled me and basically applied for my page to be memorialized, which if that's the case, um, I don't know how this has happened and there's some massive security issues at Facebook. Uh, now at first I thought this was quite comical, it's quite funny, but then I realized that as a consequence of my Facebook page being memorialized, my landscape photography page, my 
business page, even though it's not really a business. Um, that's gone. And I had, I don't know how many followers I had. I, I'm sure it was around the, I don't know, any anywhere from 15 to 30,000 followers. I don't, I don't keep, you know, I don't even know how many followers I've got on this channel. Um, but that's gone. And that's, that's really, that's actually quite bad because I, you know, although I don't use it too often, I do use it, <laughs> excuse me, I do use my Facebook page uh, for upcoming events and, and you know occasional posts and things like that and messaging people and chatting to people so um, that's bad uh, and another thing as well another consequence is friends of mine school friends family members people who I don't interact with on a daily basis it you know they might just pop onto my page for whatever reason I don't know and they, they could very well think I'm dead. And this is how, you know, people genuinely get upset. And Facebook, if Facebook is what, I'm gonna keep saying Facebook so that keywords track it. If Facebook, if you're watching this, honestly, like you've, you, you do a lot of bad stuff. You've done a lot of bad stuff. You're a pretty bad company and I don't like you. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't really use you that much, but to memorialize my page, um, without, you know, without any scrutiny, without checking anything out, is, poor practice and I, like I said I thought it was funny but actually I've been thinking of the consequences of my family members and friends uh, it's bad taste and um, I'm surprised this has happened terrible anyway moving on so let's talk about um, people's fears one of my well not one of my fears I'm actually okay with this but a lot of people get anxious about presenting to live people and I used to but I've done it so many times and when I'm on stage talking I, I talk about things that I love you know, so it comes quite easy to me. Um, but it doesn't come easy to me when I'm sick. It's happened a few times in the past where I've had to present when I'm feeling tired or a bit under the weather and then, you know, I don't get to rehearse and practice my presentation as much so I feel a bit nervous going into it and it, it can have serious knock-on effects. But this year at Nature Visions in Washington, D.C., and Manassas, not Manassas, Manassas, I had two presentations due. One was a keynote presentation, which was a full day from nine in the morning till 4 p.m. with a lunch break thrown in. So that was a big day. We covered so much and actually it went really well. Um, and I had a lot of good feedback that people were engaged for a long time. Uh, Cause I thought people would be falling asleep, especially after lunch, but no, it went well. But I was sick, I was really sick. Um, but I managed to get through lots of coffee and you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, I did that presentation went back to my hotel room and had lots of rest, had an early night's sleep and woke up the next morning and I couldn't speak at all. I have to do, I have to do a talk to a thousand people in one hour. My voice, <laughs> my voice, my voice is gone. Yeah, I had to do a presentation to what I was told was going to be a room of up to 1,200 people. I actually think on the day it was more like six or 700 people, but I had this presentation due in like two hours and I couldn't speak. And it's not like where, I, it's not, not like now where I'm a bit hoarse, you know, where I can speak, but it, it, you know, it hurts a bit. I physically, no matter what I did, I couldn't speak. This, this is a bad situation to be in. I didn't want to cancel. I didn't want to let people down because I believe people had traveled quite a way to come and see me talk. So with an hour to spare, I scrapped my entire presentation that I'd worked on for weeks. And I put together a new presentation with no speaking, no talking. So it was slides and it was video. Um, so the slide would explain <laughs> The slides would explain a little bit about the video and then I would play a video and I did that. Luckily I've got a couple of long pieces of content in my video collection that people haven't seen. So I was able to play this to the audience and explain. It was really awkward. I had to be on stage and it was completely silent and I didn't speak. And I felt a bit silly to be honest. I was doing a lot of gesturing and miming. And yeah, not a good position to be in, but again, it got good feedback. So I was able to turn the massively negative into a positive and somehow throw something together. Um, and I think people uh, were reasonably happy, although I'm sure they would have preferred me to at least have something to say. 
Another thing I want to talk about is uh, this. So yes, as I mentioned before, I was uh, in my last video. Uh, yeah, I was I was filming and the camera fell over and it broke. Oh, God. Oh. Broken screen. Yeah. And the screen completely broke. So uh, that was about halfway through filming um, on the first day. So that happened when I was setting up camp. And I thought, oh no, this is over. You know, it was bad. It was clumsy, basically. Let me explain. When I shoot my videos, go out vlogging, this camera, my image camera, my stills camera, my 5D Mark IV, this I treat like a baby. Ish. You know, when it's raining, the baby gets wet. You know, I don't care about that, it's weather sealed, right? But, you know, when I place my tripod, I place it carefully. When I put it in my bag, I put it in my bag carefully. I don't throw my bag down, I don't throw my camera around. This, I see very much more as a workhorse, a tool. You've got to get the shot. So when I'm making my videos, I will just plonk my tripod down without a second thought. Get there, frame it up, get the shot. You're here to work. I treat this really badly. Um, I really do. Um, you know, it's it, it gets thrown around because it it's there to do a job. And as a consequence, sometimes I place the, cam the tripod down without much thought and the wind might very well blow it over or it's not level and it falls over. And this has happened on many occasions, but this is the first time it's actually broken the camera. So for the rest of the video, I actually had to do everything in terms of operating the menu system and framing everything up. I had to do it through the viewfinder. Um, and when I did my piece to camera like this, I, uh, I just, with experience, I knew that if it was roughly pointing at my face, it was, you know, roughly I was gonna be in frame. The great thing about the Canon EOS N50, in fact, the great thing about most Canon cameras is the dual pixel, pixel autofocus coupled with the face detect. So I knew that I would be in focus, on point, pin sharp, because it's the best face detecting autofocus system out there for video, I think. Um, so I haven't tried any others. It's just, you know, you read these things and it is, it's very, very good. Um, so this is going away for repair. And I've, uh, I'll have to use, uh, have to borrow another one to take to Iceland. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm careless with this camera, but I don't feel bad about being careless with this camera. So that's that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to just share a couple of bits and pieces with you and explain what I've been up to over the past week. As I mentioned, as you're watching this, I will be on a flight to Reykjavik in Iceland. So I will be giving this camera a proper proper run for its money. Um, you know, like a, uh, what did they call it? Um, a, a, a real world review, I think. Um, so, you know, you know what Iceland's like. If it's windy and raining, this bad boy's getting wet. And uh, we'll see how it copes. This is the 24 to 105 lens. Um, and, you know, I'm taking this as well, don't worry. But, um, you know, it's only got one card slot, so I'm not, you know, still gonna take this one. But I am going to give it a proper test and I will compare images between the two cameras. I'll, I'll look at the quality of the lens, I'll look at the build quality, any problems I've run into. But this isn't a video channel, so I won't be testing any video features, I won't be using it for video. I won't be using half of the features on here for like wildlife or sport photography or anything like that. Unless we come across a fox or something, I don't know. But, um, you know, I will be testing, using, and talking about this camera very much from a landscape photographer's perspective. Uh, just so there's no confusion, this isn't my camera, I haven't bought it. This has been loaned to me by Canon. They asked me if, I, if you know, if, we, if you want to try one. I was like, well, there's no harm in trying. Um, but yeah, so I am interested. I don't expect I'm gonna buy it, if I'm honest. You know, because as I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't see it as much as much of an upgrade from the 5D4. So therefore it's not worth the financial investment. Um, but I am still curious to see how it operates in the ergonomics and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go, yeah. I'm gonna uh, leave and go and pack for Iceland. I apologize that perhaps it's very unlikely that next Wednesday's video is gonna be any kind of photography video because I've got no time to go out and shoot and 
feeling I've just been sick, which has hampered me. I was supposed to go out in the van for a couple of days yesterday and today, but yeah, yeah, it's not gonna work. I've been too sick, I need to recover. So stick with me and uh, join me in Wednesday's video. And as to what it's gonna be, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, we'll see. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.